Happy Friday to all of you Michigan fans. I am here in Oak Park, Michigan, where I am joined by someone who look, should look a little bit familiar to you, the new number 98, yes. former Michigan quarterback Devin Gardner here with me. And we we're going to talk a little bit about Michigan's matchup last week with Notre Dame. Uh, obviously, there was a lot to be a little bit concerned about, but I think there was also some things to like as well, don't you think, Devin? Yeah, going through the film, there was a lot of positives, you know, there were a lot of, you know, negatives that I'm pretty sure are pretty glaring to the public, but uh, there are a lot of positives that you probably won't be able to see if you don't have an eye of a, a former player or someone who understands the game. You know, and that's that's kind of what I've seen as well, and there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of concern out there, especially from couple different positions, quarterback position, offensive line, running back, just basically the entire offense when it comes down to it. But Shea Patterson didn't have a terrible game. I mean, he was 20 for 30, 227 yards, did have the two mistakes, the fumble and the interception. What did you see out of Shea in this game? I think he executed well, you know, uh, given the pressures that he was under, you know, I don't think uh, anybody can understand just earning the trust of your teammates, coming in as a new player, trying to earn the trust of the entire Michigan fan base, the largest fan base in the world, you know, and then being inserted into a, a robbery that hadn't been played in five years, you know, that's a lot of pressure on a guy, and I think he handled it pretty well. Now you've obviously, you played in that rivalry. You had, you know, isn't for, at that time, the biggest crowd in all of college football that what, ever somebody existed. beat our record? I uh, know, it's, uh, well, they cheated. They ended up having it at, uh, at a racetrack. Oh, uh, really, uh, okay, okay. St still the biggest crowd of any football game in an actual football stadium. Proud of that. But, uh, I mean, what, what goes into when you're playing in front of, you know, in a rivalry game, in front of a ton of people, obviously Notre Dame has a much smaller crowd, but, what, you know, how does that feel when you know that you're the quarterback and you're going into a hostile environment like that? I mean, it's like the weight of the world on your shoulders almost you know the Michigan football fan base expects excellence mm -hmm. and uh, you you try to give it to them and, and, and for a guy who hadn't been immersed in that rivalry and hadn't really gotten a chance to see what it was like you know playing at Ole Miss you know I'm pretty sure he didn't watch a whole bunch of Michigan Notre Dame games growing up and uh, I, I think he handled it very well so it's, it's a lot that goes into it you know and you, you try to keep it all about football but it's so tough to do with the uh, social media and all those types of things and and all the build-up you know, from a team that's supposed to be very good this year. And, and I think they're going to prove to be very good m m moving forward. Now, you, you mentioned, like, you know, about doing things, doing certain things well. What did you see that Shea did well in this game? Yeah, so Shea, uh, he, put, he put some of the things on display that we've seen uh, from his film. You know, he was able to move around in the pocket. He was able to make some throws on the run. You know, I, the one thing I would like to see more, and, and this is to no fault of his own, I like to see him in the read option game a little more just so he can – get a chance to put those skills on display even more and put put a lot of pressure on the defense, which he wasn't always allowed to do, you know, because of the uh, the different types of plays that were called. Now, you mentioned, you know, having the read option would obviously give him a little bit of a run game yeah. situation, putting the defense on their heels. We right. didn't really get to see that as much, especially because Michigan's run game was quite paltry, 1.76 right. yards. Per carry in the game, yeah. what kind of pressure does that put on a quarterback? Like, what do you... When that type, when your running game isn't getting anything going, like how do you as a quarterback end up feeling when you're in the huddle and you're under center? Like you said, it's difficult. It's one of the toughest things to do when you, your your offense, which seems to be based off of the run game, where they do a lot of big time play action. You know, it's very tough to uh, be confident in what you're doing just because the run game isn't running, and that's the it's the basis of what you do as an offense. You know, so. I think it's very tough on the quarterback to, to respond, and I think he did well. Like I, I think people are forgetting we only lost by seven points mm -hmm. against a very good team in Notre Dame. You know they came to play and they were they were prepared for pretty much everything. We made adjustments and you know we came up just short. You know losing by seven with a with a drive in the in the fourth to win the game or tie the game is 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 all you can ask for when we play so poorly in the beginning. Now you mentioned you know fans want excellence, fan you know. But, you, fans are a little bit, you know, kind of go off the deep end, yeah. at, you know, after a game Don't like this. Don't dive off the deep end. <laughs> Don't do it. It's only one game. And I think we're going to respond well, you know. And I, I like to go back to, uh, was it 2014 when uh, Coach Harbaugh's first year we played Utah. And this was like kind of the same scenario. Utah, pretty good team, you know, especially in their conference. And uh, we didn't play as well as we'd like. Our quarterback play was poor. A lot, less, a lot worse than Sh uh, Shea was in this past game, but uh, they went back because they're good coaches. They 
They made adjustments. They did think, okay, this is what our quarterback is able to do. This is what he's not comfortable doing. Because when you're a new quarterback and you're trying to learn to trust your teammates and of your coaches, you don't really have the voice to say, I'm not comfortable with that because you don't want to be replaced. Mm -hmm. You know, so trying to earn the trust, he probably, you know, went along with some things that he wasn't quite comfortable with. But I'm pretty sure that now they can see, okay, he's not comfortable with this on game day, at least not yet. Mm -hmm. And now he can uh, move forward with uh, – doing the things he can do. Speaking of not wanting to lose your job, a lot of fans are really excited about what they saw out of Dylan McCaffrey. Mm. You've been in the situation both as the backup to Denard Robinson yeah. when sometimes people didn't like his ability to throw the ball downfield. Yeah. And then you were also the starting quarterback and had everyone clamoring for Shane Morris. Right. What What is that like having, you know, having someone breathing down your back and then maybe if they come in and and show a little something, kind of like Dylan McCaffrey did, getting yeah. you know going four of six. And what what does that do as far as your mentality? Well, you know, you always competing, and uh, Coach Harbaugh's created an environment in Michigan where competition is always a thing. You know, so it, no one's ever comfortable. It's not like you feel the guy. He's he's created a, an atmosphere in which he believes in his quarterback wholeheartedly, but you're also still competing. Mm -hmm. So you don't feel the guy breathing on your neck, but you're also pressured to continue to perform well if you want to keep your job. And uh, like everyone else, I was very impressed with Dylan McCaffrey because that's one of the toughest things to do. You think about the starter who, who hasn't ever played a game in Michigan, you know, trying to earn the trust of the, the fan base. That guy goes down. Now, what, do you, what about the backup who's never played a snap of college football, you know, who comes in in a rivalry that's so heralded and, you know, everybody knows about it. And, and you know, he's expected to perform well. No one cares that you haven't ever taken a snap in a game at the University of Michigan or any college program. You know, and he responded well, and it looks as if he's been there before, which was amazing for me. And he has a, 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 a long family history of, you know, great players, and that was, that was amazing to see from a young guy who hadn't touched the field in college football. Also was had a read option play. I like he had a read game. option. I, I enjoyed watching it, and he, he got a chance to run a little bit. You know, I'm pretty sure they weren't expecting that. <laughs> Notre Dame wasn't, you know. So and that, he just showed some of the skills he has and, and showed that he'll be able to compete you know, it kind of seemed like he got lost in the shuffle a little bit last year, but uh, he showed that he's here to compete and he's here to play. Now, let me ask you this. What did you see out of Michigan's offensive line that you've obviously been in that situation? Mm -hmm. There is, it was definitely some concerning moments as far as it looked like the exterior line hadn't coalesced the way that people had hoped it had in the offseason. Well, bre breaking down the film, you know, and this is kind of why I say football is the ultimate team game because – a lot of the time, it was four guys doing it right and one guy making a mistake. Mm -hmm. and, and not necessarily not knowing his job, maybe losing a rep, you know, because uh, football is a, a lot of one-on-one -on -one reps. And, you know, maybe one guy loses a rep and, and that kind of destroys the run game or the play. Or maybe, maybe two guys aren't on the same page as far as doing things. So I think they're fully capable of playing well. And I, and I think Notre Dame caught them by surprise with a few things that they, they didn't expect. And I think that that's something that's going to change throughout the year because there are a lot of big guys, and, they're, and, and I'm pretty sure they've been in the weight room, and they're very strong, and they're small guys as well, or else they won't be on the field. So I think they will be better, you know, especially some of the plays where we got a guy, uh, Ruiz, our center, who's, who's moving and climbing the linebacker, and he's doing the right thing, he's doing everything right, but he's just a little too big, and he gets clipped by a defensive lineman and can't get to the linebacker as quickly as he needed to. So things like that are, are, are things that are definitely fixable. And uh, it could be some first game jitters where, you know, he hasn't played a lot of football at the University of Michigan either. So I think that uh, reps and continued uh, practice is going to continue to make us better. Now Michigan moves on to Western tomorrow on Saturday. <clears throat> but what do you do to avoid having a, a letdown? Obviously, Michigan already lost a game, but you come off of not only just the season opener, but a huge game against yeah. Notre Dame. Now you're playing a directional school. How do you... How do you avoid having that type of letdown going into this? I mean, the, the huge cliche is don't let one team beat you twice, you know. And, and it's a cliche, but it, it's very true because uh, Notre Dame, that was an emotional game. You know, you come in and you haven't played this rivalry. No one on that team had ever played in that rivalry, you know. And, and then now they see how emotional it was and how, how much it was riding on that game. And, and you don't want to come into the next week and uh, have a letdown on a team that you should beat. All right, excellent. Well, Michigan takes on Western Michigan Saturday at noon at the Big House for the home opener. Uh, for Wolverines Wire, I'm Isaiah Hole here with Devin Gardner, and we will see you again soon. Go Blue.